teaching and learning. That's why expressing our pride in our public schools is a critical step as we move forward. We have so much to be proud of in the school district of Fort Atkinson. So our plan, we will be celebrating internally throughout the week and inviting families and our community to celebrate with us in a variety of ways. One Fort promo items will be available at each school for families to proudly display and share with friends and family members who are also One Fort proud. Promo items are also available at the Chamber of Commerce and the Park and Rec Office. From yard signs to bumper stickers, window clings, temporary tattoos, and stickers, let's show our pride for our Fort Public Schools. So for our internal plan for our students, for those of you that don't know what a jam board is, it's not a physical board that you jam to music on. So just clarifying that for everyone. So imagine a large blank sheet of paper, as you might see on the screen, uh, that would be displayed in the lunchroom or a common space with one question in the center. What do you like about Fort schools? So it's a jam board is just that, um, but it's virtual. So we're going to have a virtual option for our virtual students and then a physical one in our buildings. And that link can be found on the homepage of our website. At the end of the week, each school will take some photos of the answers and send them to the district so I can share collectively with our community the answers that our kids and our staff come up with. Well, who doesn't love a good dress up day? We will encourage both our in-person and our virtual learners to participate in our dress up days throughout the week. Staff and families can submit photos each day to the district for us to share with our community. This link is available on our homepage as well. Elementary principals will pick one winning class based on their positive behavioral interventions and support systems, and they will win a class part, a pizza party that will be made special by our nutrition department. At the middle school and high school, they will award one student and one staff per grade level with a $10 pizza gift card. For our community and our staff involvement piece, throughout the week, we will have some secret agent staff members that will be surprising a handful of randomly selected One Fort fans to receive $25 in chamber bucks for representing One Fort. Our secret agent staff members will also be traveling to each staff parking lot and randomly selecting One Fort fans to receive $25 in chamber bucks and $10 to a local coffee shop for representing One Fort. So a special coupon will be placed on the winning vehicle and will be redeemable at that school office. For community involvement, similar to our One Fort Alumni Feature Friday posts on our Facebook page, each day we will be asking our community what their One Fort story is. We invite our community to join in the conversation each day beginning at 11 a.m. We hope that you, our community, staff, families, and students will join us in celebrating our lovely public schools next week. Do you guys have any questions for me? Will the uh, secret agents be dressed, dressed like Magnum PI? <laughs> you know, I, that's, I cannot discuss that right now. Okay. Because <laughs> I'd be on the lookout for some Magnum PIs then. Will we get to see the, the virtual jam boards anywhere? Um, yes, I will be sharing those on Friday afternoon once I um, collect all of those responses. I do know um, I was visiting the high school student senate today to um, ha uh, see what, they, what ideas they had to help celebrate this, and they actually got started on the virtual jam board, and they were making their physical jam board as well. So awesome. There should be some answers if you want to check it out. <laughs> Looking forward to seeing it. Any other questions? That's great, thank you. All right, thank you guys. Thank you much, Marissa. All right, we'll move, um, go ahead and move forward to comments from the audience on agenda, non-agenda items. Um, if you uh, have anything, if you would like to uh, speak, please come to the podium, give us your uh, name and address, and uh, please keep it to uh, three minutes. Seeing none in person, are there any uh, to be read? There are not. There are none. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Abbott.
Um, now we move forward to the consent agenda, Dr. Abbott. Sure, Robert's rules provides for a consent agenda listing several items for approval of the board in a single motion. Documentation concerning these items have been provided to all board members in advance to assure an extensive and thorough review and will uh, become a part of the permanent record. Items may be removed from the consent agenda at the request of any board member. This evening we have item A, minutes of January 18, 2021 regular meeting and February 1, 2021 special meeting. Item B, board policy at 0167.2 closed session update. That is a second read. Item C, board policy 30.1 update and technical corrections. That is a first read. Item D, personnel requests. We have several retirements to report this evening. Retirement requests from Cassandra Jacobs, 1.0 FTE librarian at Fort Atkinson High School. James Dorn, 1.0 FTE special education teacher at Fort Atkinson Middle School. Betty Del Sart, 1.0 FTE social studies teacher at Fort Atkinson Middle School. Sabine Bottom, 1.0 FTE science teacher at Fort Atkinson High School. Chris England, 1.0 FTE second grade teacher at Barry Elementary School, and Curtis Brockmeyer, 1.0 uh, school counselor at Fort Atkinson High School, uh, effective at the end of the 2021 school year. Uh, the Board of Education, of course, wishes to thank Cassandra Jacobs for her 21 years, James Dorn for his 19 years, Betty Del Sart for her 24 years, Sabine Bottom for her 21 years, Chris England for her 18 years, and Curtis Brockmeyer for his 29 years of service and dedication to the students and community in the school district of Fort Atkinson. Item E, gifts to the school district. This evening is a donation from Grace United Church of $500 to the Fort Atkinson School District Angel Fund to support the free meal program. Item F, uh, budget transfers. And item G, payment of district bills and the treasurer's report. Thank you very much, Dr. Abbott. Is there any board discussion um, about the consent agenda, anything that we want to pull out specifically and discuss, or would we like to go ahead and motion? Be it resolved that the Board of Education approve the consent agenda as written. I'll second. A uh, motion by Mrs. Sneathan, a second by Mr. Nickram, and a roll call, please, Mrs. Haas. Mr. Paul? Yes. Mrs. Reynolds? Yes. Mrs. Sneathan? Aye. Mr. Nickram? Yes. Mr. Cheney? Yes, and that passes. Moving forward, we will go to the uh, non-instruction portion of the evening, which is uh, the mid-year compensation adjustment. Yes, as the board is aware, our compensation system allows for a mid-year adjustment for um, some certain circumstances, one of which is in a, an advancement in degree, of which we did have one staff member um, earn their master's degree during the first semester of the school year, warranting an adjustment in the compensation system for second semester. Any discussion about the mid-year uh, compensation adjustment on the board? All right, seeing none, we can uh, entertain the resolution. Be it resolved that the Board of Education approves an additional mid-year salary increase for a certified staff member effective with the 2021 school year. I'll second. A uh, motion by Mr. Nickram, a second by <coughs> Mrs. Reynolds, and a roll call, please, Mrs. Haas. Mrs. Reynolds? Yes. Mrs. Sneathan? Aye. Mr. Nickram? Yes. Mr. Paul? Yes. Mr. Cheney? Yes, and that passes. Moving on, we will move to Dr. Abbott's strategic plan update. Uh, yes, good evening again. Um, I'm very happy to be with you to uh, provide an update on our upcoming strategic plan. Um, as we've talked about uh, in this room before, uh, we retired uh, the last uh, strategic plan earlier in the school year in anticipation of working through a process together uh, along with our staff and community to uh, determine what and how the district will move forward strategically over the, uh, over the next several years. Um, I think we'd all agree that this has in fact been a year of evolution <laughs> and when I was with 
you uh, talking on this subject this fall, I, I said, you know, we will continue working through the rigors of this year and we will come back with a strategic plan process that we feel fits our current needs and desires and that we'll be able to uh, work through together uh, when the time is right and the time is right. Um, so we are moving forward from our five bold step plan that was our last strategic plan. Uh, definitely taking some time to celebrate our advancements as well as understanding our needs as well as the areas of growth that our district continues to have. Embracing disruptive innovation, engaging in process to look forward and moving to that of a results-based vision and a results-based school district. When I was with you last, we also talked about the strategic plan being built on the foundation of two pillars. The first, that is student learning in both English language arts and math, and that being our strong core. That being achievement, what is it that our kids know, as well as growth, where is it that our kids are going, and what is that trajectory? As well as a second uh, and equally important pillar, and that is excellence in programming. Comprehensive programming in our K-12, 4K-12 system um, that is beyond uh, our strength and core, but in quality programming appealing to the needs and interests of so many of our students, as well as continuing our uh, notion of innovative advancement. So we see this as a number of steps uh, to our future uh, success. And this evening, uh, we would put forward five different steps in that approach. Uh, the first being regrounding, the second reflecting and reimagining, re uh, the third define, then design, and then embark. So five phases, and we would uh, suggest this working February, uh, so yet this month through September when we would launch our new strategic plan. So each of these ideas has a guiding question. So the first, when we talk about regrounding, uh, what is important to our One Fork team and our One Fork community? So this journey would have us in February and March working uh, with staff and community engagement on our district beliefs as well as our guiding principles. So we would see this being the board drafting district beliefs and guiding principles. Uh, those drafts would then be shared with the staff, family, and community for feedback. And then we would come back to the board where the board would actually finalize those beliefs and guiding principles um, upon which we could continue on with the next step. So that's what we're considering regrounding. Then we talk about reflecting and reimagining. Who are we and who is it that we would want to be? So this shift then in April, uh, May, and June would be shifting onto the district mission as well as the district vision statements. We see the board drafting a new mission and vision statement. Those drafts again then being shared with our stakeholders for feedback internal and external. And then the new mission and vision statement being established by the Board of Education. Then we look at define. What is it that we are aiming for? And this moves us into June, which is an excellent time. The school year will have come and gone. Summer school will be up and running. And this will be a time for us to do some goal setting. So this will be a time for us to come to the board and present a comprehensive set of data, um, as well as um, get some help from you in determining what our baseline data might be. So from what point is it that we're looking to grow forward? So we would see the board working with administration to draft those strategic plan goals and measures of that success, potentially looking at plan length, also the success indicators, how do we, we know if we're on target and making the progress we want, and also providing our community a return to those investment benchmarks. This is where we would be setting a very specific results-based measure for the district. And I think we've, we've been clear, and I think the board has supported as well, the idea that our results measure is something our community uh, should know, <laughs> our staff should know. And we have a very clear idea of where is it that we're heading uh, in the future. So then, of course, uh, design, how is it that we will get there? So we look at this being uh, July and August. Um, the state data will be released by then. So we have mechanisms in place now for a few years where July we have data teams from all of our buildings and district get together and work through, desegregate, analyze, and look at our, our learning data and other uh, indicators throughout the district. 
Um, the administration and related building level subcommittees would develop action plans and yearly benchmarks. So under that results driven goal that I was talking about, these are the actual plans, these are the steps, these are the increments that buildings in our district will take to continue working towards that larger goal. And then the administrative team makes a recommendation uh, to set those incremental goals for the following school year. So we may well determine that to reach our um, our strategically set results driven goal would be a five year plan. So this would be an example of year one towards that results given plan or driven plan. These are the action steps that we will be working on in earnest and then reporting back to you and our community as we continue to incrementally work towards that results driven goal. So may it could be five years it could be shorter it could be longer we'll know that more in june as we take a look at data and we have um, adjusted or made any um, provided any new thoughts and our beliefs or guiding principles or mission or vision and where it is that we'd want to go and then of course we embark and our journey begins as we launch the new strategic plan um, at the beginning of the school year. I feel pretty strongly that that is the appropriate time to launch a new strategic plan. <laughs> We're starting a new school year. We have teachers and staff and students and families and our community back ready and fresh to pick up where kids are presently at that time and moving them forward towards that goal that we've set together um, throughout this process. So we're taking the time to embrace opportunity as well as to think differently about strategic planning. Admittedly, this is a much different process than we used before, um, but I'm very excited about our board and community and staff being able to really take a look at our vision, really take a look at our mission, really take a look at our data, really give some thought as to where is it that we think we can set as a rigorous yet attainable goal in the future. But I do want to bring that back and remind everyone involved that that type of success is again built on two pillars. So it's not just about a single test score. It's not just about any one measure. It's definitely about whether our students are achieving, if they're learning and showing us that they're learning. It's definitely about individual student growth. Are our kids moving in the right direction over time? But it's also about excellence in programming, comprehensive programming. Our district and our past and uh, present board have had a huge commitment to whole uh, child education, and that would not wane in this plan. Programming that prepares and values all career pathways, programming sufficient to meet the academic and social emotional needs of all learners, and our continued commitment uh, to equity and opportunity as well as practice. And we continue to be um, working in a place of innovation, our, our passion for distinction. How is it that we make the school district of Fort Atkinson the destination that we <laughs> want to continue to grow and we want other people to see no other choice but to join us here in Fort Atkinson. The commitment to contemporary practice and research-based programming and then alignment to rigorous standards and state improvement areas. So again, when we talk about being results driven, it's not reduced to a standardized test score. And I don't want anyone to have any sort of ability to say otherwise. That is not the intention here. But we do have to set some very specific goals that are public, that we are having transparency with, and that we are demonstrating whether or not we are moving in the direction that we all want to go. So success is no accident. It is, in fact, hard work. It's perseverance. It's learning. It's studying. It's sacrifice. And most of all, it's a love of what you are doing or learning to do. And in my book, that is what we talk about when we use the word results. So my mantra this year with our staff and maybe down the road will be we can, we will, we must. And I think that is what I have laid out for you is um, in rather short order a plan that will get us to a place to launch next fall in a, in a place of strength and in a place of rigor and in a place of moving forward. So with that, I would be happy to answer any questions that you might have about the strategic planning uh, process that we're laying out for you this evening. I don't have any questions. I just think it's, a, it's worth noting that 
I think that this uh, board is in a good position to um, be able to communicate uh, things that this, that the community has expressed to us that probably wouldn't have come up if we hadn't done a pan if we hadn't you know survived so far a pandemic. Um, so I think that that we have a, a unique uh, circumstance there, but I also feel like our our youth in our relative um, unentrenchedness, if you would say, uh, is going to really work in our favor as far as um, having few attachments to any um, specific idea. We're more malleable, but we know what we need to we know what we need to do, but we're open to how to do that. So I think that's going to be. I think it's gonna be good, but we're gonna really need to hear from, you know, our administrators and our staff in, you know, very clear uh, terms what they think we should, you know, when they're communicating with us, they should, it needs to be uh, clear and uh, not like this rambling thing that I'm doing right now, but clear and um, uh, uh, results-based, solutions-based, sorry. I will bow out after that. I think that's a, a very good point, though, because I think it is capitalizing on the disruption, the mobility that we've had. So I, I think we can all, and you've heard me say from this podium several times before, I, I've, I've said this is not the catalyst that we would have picked for change, but it is the one that we were given, and it is our uh, chance to lose if we don't capitalize on the mobility that we've been given through somewhat unfortunate circumstances for sure, um, but an immense opportunity for our district moving forward. Uh, what we would be looking for is working through um, beliefs and guiding principles, getting some things pulled together from past strategic plans, things from the most recent strategic plan, items that we know would be on people's minds. We would be getting those um, drafts to um, you and our other stakeholders to provide feedback and provide additions or ideas related to those as well. And then we'd be able to bring those together for you uh, later this spring for us or for you to work through and, and finalize and then move on to our next step. And I, I think the board and the community will enjoy working through that process and re-identifying um, what our mission and what our vision is for the district. Yeah, this to me is uh, pretty exciting. When, when, when I heard about this a number of months ago, uh, this, is, this is something that immediately perked my ears up a little bit. Um, the, the results base, like, like you mentioned before, it's, it's not one test score, you know, it's, it's where we're going to be. And I, I think that'll provide a good metric for the public to better understand where we're heading and better engage with our, our district as a whole. So I think that's, that's essential and important. On the flip side of it, what's important is also the timing to this, right? What, what, what the district is gonna look like in six months is gonna be vastly different than what we've looked like in the last six months. So, uh, I'm, I'm excited to see where this is going to head. Um, I understand there's a heck of an amount of time and a heck of an amount of resources that we're going to put into this, but um, I, I think come September, I, I think there's going to be a lot of good ideas and a lot of, a lot of good uh, thoughts put into this. So thank you for doing so. It's a prudent pace. Yes. So. Prudent pace, yes. <laughs> <laughs> for alliteration. And you, yeah, I love alliteration. You got to love it. Uh, any uh, further discussion? said it well so you heard it here in february uh folks if you have some uh, uh suggestions may as well start crystallizing those down to really thank you clear uh yeah appreciate your support um so uh hearing none we'll go ahead and move forward to uh school reopening update our school opening update and that is also dr abbott Yes, so it is time for the monthly uh, update of school opening or reopening. Um, we were very excited to welcome all of our middle school and high school students back um, within the last couple of weeks for those who would like to be attending in person on a daily basis. Um, that has gone very well for us. And of course, we continue to offer a true concurrent learning option for all of our students at our elementary, middle, and high schools. Um, and while that definitely does present some challenges, it is also a very effective um, learning strategy and, and is, is working um, for many of our families and students as well. So we continue to thank all involved uh, for their heavy lifting and in, in helping um, that work. Um, but certainly our families are, are showing um, their desire for that option to continue as we continue to navigate through um, all things COVID. 
So while in person, um, we may continue to need to uh, return to a, a virtual only environment. Um, if that were to be the case, we will definitely consider uh, the Jefferson County guidance as it has been um, in our past. Um, guidance has been shifting a little bit and so we are, are watching all of that very, very closely as, as it goes. Um, we've been very fortunate, quite honestly, with the way certain days have or school days have fallen or certain other things have fallen that we've not needed to close unilaterally. And clearly that's our hope to be able to continue doing that moving forward. I think it's also a testament to the mitigation strategies we have in place, some of the core hoarding that we've been able to do, some of the creative scheduling and other strategies, of course, with hand washing and, and masks and everything else, but our, our building administration and staff have really done an incredible job of, of keeping us open. Um, so with that, um, related to school opening, it's the monthly update related to facilities use in the district. It's, I think, everyone's favorite time. Um, so as you know, we have two different things going. The first is related to youth. Um, the board approved in November to pay for half of the additional cleaning costs for outside facilities users if they are youth groups. Um, you've also asked for a monthly update as to the cost to the district for that um, for that resolution. Uh, the cost from last month to this month is uh, $2,613. That has been the district's contribution. Um, it's nice to see our facilities being used as much as they are and as safely as they are. So that number has definitely grown, but so has the building use. So. Um, and then last month, the board approved um, allowing adult non-district facilities users. Um, the board approved adult users paying the full cost or the non-subsidized cost of the additional cleaning related to COVID. Um, the cost incurred by the district since January's meeting is $17.50. So that number is, I think, significantly smaller than we were expecting it to be. Um, I would just point out that our adult users have been paying the same rate as youth just because the policy was adjusted to reflect uh, <laughs> the youth rate when we made that change last fall. Um, and so the board would um, have some decision making moving forward, um, consideration of future use for adult groups, um, continuing allowing adult users to adjust um, or continue allowing adult users and adjust the cleaning fees to the full cost. So for us to, to remedy that policy where there would be a, a costing for youth and a costing for adults, um, or to continue allowing adult users and um, maintain the current cleaning fees um, that is the same as youth. And then also for your consideration, um, I believe a, a resolution or motions are in order related to allowing everyday attendance for the middle school and high school. The board gave me the authority to adjust our plan, um, which of course I did. Um, but a uh, resolution to that effect I think would be great. And then again, any changes related to building use if desired. And I just want to say that the data is looking really fantastic in Jefferson County, and I don't think that is happening by chance. I think people are doing everything they can to keep kids in school and to keep teachers and staff healthy and to keep what we're doing and the good work that we have underway in the forward direction. And that is not lost on us, or I know it's not lost on you. So a very significant thank you um, to the community for everything um, that they have, they've done to, in that order. Thank you very much, Dr. Abbott. And very well put there at the end. I would totally uh, agree. That was the only note I had was uh, that clearly uh, our community is doing the good work and uh, we appreciate it. I know that everybody here appreciates being able to do what we're supposed to be doing. And I'm sure all of you guys per uh, appreciate being able to do what you're supposed to do. and. Uh, Keep up the good work and we 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 genuinely thank the community um you know so i um do we have any discussion about uh facility use do we want to change anything personally these numbers don't you know 2631 dollars doesn't make me you know completely uncomfortable but um, does any board member have any discussion or uh, changes they would like to make to how we're doing things? 
I think the way that it is right now with adults being charged the you know the fifth, the, the half fee, um, I, I think that is fair and reasonable. Given that there is only one use, we you could choose to wait a month, I suppose, mm -hmm. to see if there is additional use or or not. But sorry, I interrupted you, Mrs. Reynolds. Oh, that's fine. I think that the adults could pay full price. Full price. I mean, honestly, if you're going to use the facility, it's going to be, I, I definitely think that the adults should be able to afford the full price for the, for the cleaning and then keep the, on, obviously keep the youth at paying half. That was our original, I think, intention. Was that yeah. Sort of like a o oversight that we could correct. Yep. Yes. Yeah, I, I guess I agree. I mean, it doesn't seem like it, it's making much of a difference right now, but. Um, I, yeah, I, I agree with that. Adults should pay full. Yeah. That'd be my choice. I'm not gonna argue with anybody about it, but. <laughs> well, so, but that's what we're gonna, we probably are not gonna argue about it, but we'll right. take a vote on it. We'll change from the adults paying half to adults paying full, uh, child, uh, youth uh, organization still subsidized 50% by the uh, district. Um, so can I just, Clarify. So at the end of your discussion, your existing motion is for full price. So that was simply us adjusting <laughs> the, the, the posted policy on the website to reflect yeah. what those numbers would be for each group. Yeah. Um, you would only need to take action this evening if you are wanting to change it in the other direction, and right. that is to make it the same cost as you. Thank you for the uh, clarification. So it is complicated, so it's fine. It's, you, made, you made it very, very uh, clear for us here. So. So uh, if, there's any, if there's not any more discussion, we can entertain the motions as written, um, but that's up to y'all. So there would only be a resolution if a change was oh, requested. But so. We, this, so we don't have a resolution for this um, school opening update. Yeah, so on the draft resolutions that you could consider, there is one about the school reopening, and I'm sorry, I'm not looking at the agenda version. Building. Oh, yeah, that's it, yeah. Well, we okay. that way, right? All right, yeah, so we'll go ahead and uh, we'll entertain the motion to... Uh, just, so, just so we're clear, I know this is, I want to make sure that we're, we're clear on this. So uh, a motion would be to main, you know, a couple different options, maintain going, you know, the 100%, or we could do the 50%. We've been doing the 50% to adult groups, is that right? Yes. So if we decide to make a, a uh, resolution, it would be to, to change it to 50%. Which is reflecting current practice. Correct. So, right. So what we're, what we're discussing here today is if we say we're, there's no changes, it's going to, in fact, basically double what, what adults are paying today. Mm -hmm. Correct. Does that make sense? Yep. At the middle and high school students who are like in person instruction shall continue to be allowed to do so on a daily basis. Second. Motion by Mr. Paul, a second by Mrs. Sneven, and a roll call, please, Mrs. Haas. And that would only need to be a voice vote. Unless oh. you want me to do a roll call, I can't. Oh, no, that's, that's, yeah, voice vote. Sorry, I don't know what I was looking at. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 And all those opposed? And that passes. Yeah, that's me. Oh, sorry. you're opposed, and that passes. Um, sorry about that. It was pretty clunky, guys. I don't know what I was doing. You, I, mean, I, mean, I, I kind of felt like we just need to have a little bit more discussion on that real quick. I, I didn't know if everyone was on the same page. I just want to be very clear about this, because this has been something that's kind of been coming up a little bit. I'm not trying to make a big deal about it, but I just want to be very clear on everybody knows what's going on with us, right? Sure. If you wouldn't mind, can I pause for a, so the last motion yes. was about allowing middle school and high school students to mm -hmm. allow every day in person. Mm -hmm. And I just want to make sure that that vote, I'm sorry. Yes. I just want to make sure yes. that that yes. vote yes. was yes. reflected. Yes. <laughs> that was my understanding. Sorry. That's, sorry. that's my fault. Yes. But I added to it too, because I was confused, because I was looking at the roll call vote. It's, it's yeah. Yes. Okay, so I just wanted to make that clear on your behalf. We're going to have our training wheels As I knew, <laughs> as I knew your sentiments. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew that was the case, so I thought I'd make that very clear. Yeah, no, Corey coming out of the shadows. No, no, that's fine. All right, fine. So, so we, now we do have an open, uh, we have an open 
uh, forum now, t we, we, will, we can motion for the next resolution unless there's discussion. Though we have had the discussion about the facility use, is there any further discussion that we'd like to have for clarity's sake? My only question, I guess, is we have a few re resolutions here that if we, if we wanna resume or what the full price, we, do, we take no action at all, right? That's correct. Okay. And if w somebody wants to provide a motion, they certainly can, and then discussion could continue after a second as well. So if there's no, no change, then we just move on to the next agenda item. I'm good with that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, you know, you guys kind of heard, I, I, I don't think, um, what was it, 17, 17.50 for adult usage or, you know, what, whatever it was. I, I, to me, that's, you know, as, as numbers continue to improve, I don't think we're going to see a whole lot of additional custodial assistance needed when adults come in. I don't think we have a huge demand for adult, adult groups coming in, although that could increase. Um, to me, I, I think that's fair. If, um, if we want to make it at the same rate as the youth groups that we have today, um, I, I think I am, I'm becoming more comfortable with that. Right. Is that what you're uh, saying? at the <laughs> at, at the at the, <laughs> at the same rate as what we are what charging youth groups? Paying. Correct, right. what they have yes. been paying. Yes, but yeah, but they're this school isn't subsidizing the half; they're paying the full youth rate. So, right? Yes. I feel like Am, are we at the white, right? I feel like I might need a whiteboard. <laughs> um, <laughs> last month's resolution was that adults could use the facilities, but they would need to pay. 100% of the additional cleaning fees. To that, and to, to date, youth have been paying half, the district has been paying half. Last month, the district paid $2,600 and change towards the youth building use cleaning. Last month, you approved the adults paying for 100% of the cleaning fees. Um, they were, um, the policy that was on the, on the website listed it as the youth, which was half. So in that example, the one time we had a classroom used, the, the group was charged $17.50. Had it been 100%, it would have been double that. It would have been $35 or however that works out. So if you take no action, if that group wants to use the facility tomorrow night, it will be $35. And if you do take action, it will remain $17.50. Does that help? Okay, and, and it is confusing, so I'm, I'm glad that people are looking for clarity. Moving? All right, so we'll go ahead and move forward to uh, WASB, CISA, future uh, legisl legislative advocacy, and future board meetings. Uh, yesterday, um, WASB had a legal and legislative update. It was during the day. Um, there are a few different things going on in Madison right now. Um, that video is available to you on the on WASB website if that's something that you would take, like to take a look at. There will be another one coming at the end of March. Um, and this is the season where those do become a little bit more, more uh, interesting. Also, if you're looking at the website and you're looking at their professional learning opportunities, you will see one related to school budgeting. Um, we would encourage you not to attend that session, but to set up a session with Mr. Demarath instead. Um, I talked with Mr. Demarath today, and, th and that presentation, while I'm sure is very good, is not necessarily um, the contemporary approach that we have with the Smarter School Spending Model, um, and he would be very happy to find a time to uh, do a, a webinar. And it doesn't have to be 7 o'clock on a Thursday night, and, <laughs> and he's a little bit more dynamic, I think, than some as well. So. I would prefer sitting with him to <laughs> 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 <Just> stay <laughs> <laughs> I was a little last, uh, Thing. Yeah. There was a bit of like, <laughs> I understand what you want us to understand, but I also have questions that you guys could answer because you're, you know, yeah. pros. That's definitely a, a complicated topic for everyone, and we have a lot to be excited about in the way that we are handling um, budgeting in this district. So um, that would be a, a great, great opportunity for you there. Um, other than that, um, CISA and WSB, everybody's working together right now as, as Madison is beginning to um, move some things forward with, with budgeting and other resolutions, but it, it's all sort of in sync. 
Fantastic. And then um, the uh, items for the next sure, we burdens? have a Start College Now or the Early College Credit Program requests, the School Nursing Services contract, remarks from our uh, school board candidate for the April election, summer school course approvals, preliminary notices of non-renewal, uh, Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction COVID-19 Regulatory Flexibility Framework and Waivers. Um, and we will have some updates on the new strategic plan process that we, that we outlined this evening as well. And I'm guessing we'll have some other personnel um, items for us. Um, our retirement um, deadline for staff is February 28th. Um, so um, people who are anticipating retiring at the end of the school year will we'll bring to you in March um, as well. Excellent, thank you very much, Dr. Abbott. Uh, now we will turn to everyone's favorite uh, resolution. Be, be it resolved that the Board of Education adjourn. I'll second. I have a motion by Mr. Nickram, a second by Mrs. Reynolds. All those uh, in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? And that is, uh, that's your meeting, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We are out here at 7.13.